Now, I think that there are so many reasons why we should support local humanitarians, but I'd like to talk about four more reasons. Not only are they the first and the ongoing responders, they dare to work where others cannot or will not. So right now, across Syria, there are nearly one million people who are being besieged, slowly starved to death in a medieval siege tactic, no aid allowed to enter. There are no big aid agencies working there, but the Syrian charities are. And just last month, one of our partners in San ran a successful crowdfunding campaign to train 14 mental health care workers to provide severely traumatized women with the psychological support and the trauma recovery techniques they need so that they can de redevelop their resilience and continue. They are reaching the most marginalized and the most vulnerable of communities. The second reason is grit, the resilience we do not give up. Last November, one of our partners, the Independent Doctors Association, had their children's hospital in Aleppo bombed. Imagine it was the sixth time that their children's hospital had been bombed. In fact, Physicians for Human Rights, an American not-for-profit, has documented over 800 attacks on hospitals across Syria since the beginning of the war, 90% of it by the Syrian regime, the other 10% by other armed actors. And they say this has been used as a premeditated, systematic targeting of healthcare, using its destruction as a weapon of war. But they don't just bomb hospitals, they also kill medics. Hundreds of my colleagues have been killed, 40% of them under torture. One of my colleagues, Dr. Ahmed, we had been working together. I was in the UK, he was in Damascus. We'd done just a few projects together. I was trying to support his medical aid delivery. And one day he was arrested by the regime and he was severely tortured for nine months and miraculously was one of the few who left. And he said for three months of his torture, it was about me. I had never met him. Our crime was upholding our Hippocratic oath and daring to, to treat patients who wherever they are across the country. But we don't give up. And so we worked with the Independent Doctors Association and ran a crowdfunding campaign for them last December after their children's hospital was bombed because we wanted to rebuild hospitals. We will not be stopped from doing our life-saving work. And so we ran a campaign called the People's Convoy so that we can rebuild a hospital, and we did it. 5,000 people from over 10 countries raised an amazing quarter of a million dollars in just two weeks. And we then drove the hospital equipment all the way from London in convoy to the Syria border to deliver it to our partners as a loud and clear message that we will not be stopped from doing our life-saving work and taking hundreds of messages of solidarity from people from around the world to the local aid workers so that they know they are heard and they are seen.